Today, we're gonna talk about microplastics. My name is Amari Walker. I think it's time to share some facts about microplastics that are likely to shock you. I've been studying microplastics for over five years now, and all the research that I've been doing, I feel like it's time to share with the world all of these amazing facts that you need to know about how microplastics interact with our daily lives. Fact number one, microplastics sometimes aren't really that small. Now, before we even go into it, what are microplastics? Microplastics are just smaller pieces of plastic. They're usually either intentionally made that small or degraded from things like your plastic water bottles, your face masks that you're wearing and those gloves. Please go cloth face masks, y'all. The straws that y'all use, anything that's plastic is gonna eventually degrade in the environment or the landfill into microplastics. Microplastics can be degraded through different environmental processes. That includes being exposed to air, sunlight, water, or even a mechanical abrasion. Abrasion can occur from things like chewing on your straw when you're drinking out of a smoothie, or even a plastic water bottle being hit by waves continuously on the shoreline and rubbing into the sand. There are many different ways that microplastics are formed. How small can they get? Well, NOAA classifies microplastics as smaller than five millimeters. Five millimeters. How small is that? Those push pins on your bulletin board, the top of that is about five millimeters. So anything below that is what people classify as microplastics. The scientific community is still trying to determine what's the best way to characterize these microplastics. And they typically do that looking at their size, their shape, their color, or even the type, whether it was primarily made that small or degraded into a secondary microplastic. Fact number two, microplastics are sometimes tasty. Animals interact with microplastics because they see it as a form of prey, whether it's the size, shape, texture, or even color, certain animals are actually attracted to plastic. And yes, it can sometimes taste good to them. Animals can be attracted to the plastic because of the biofilm that grows on it, or even the chemical tastiness that they enjoy about it. So that explains why sometimes cats love to lick and play in plastic because it tastes good to them. Ah! Zooplankton have shown that they prefer aged plastic over pristine plastic. So the longer these stay in our environment, it's gonna make them more attracted to microplastics. Now, why is that bad? When animals consume plastic, it can cause physical blockages and mechanical damages to their guts, to the, any part of their digestive tract. So it makes it very difficult for them to remove it from their body. And if they stay in there long enough, they have the potential to move outside of their digestive tract and into other parts of the body. Studies are looking into even the possibility of these microplastics being transmitted from a mother to their children. So generational transfer of microplastics. So they stay in that species forever. If another species ends up consuming that prey, it's possible for that microplastic to then transfer to the larger predator and continue up our food chain. Now that's scary. But what's scarier is fact number three. Fact number three. Microplastics have thousands of chemicals. These additives are placed into the plastic or even parts of the plastic during the production and manufacturing of your plastic product. The chemicals added are used to enhance the aesthetics, the functionality, and the longevity of the plastic so it stays in our environment longer than necessary. Some of these additives include UV inhibitors, flame retardants, 
colorants, and even plasticizers. Every microplastic that you come into contact with is going to have a very different combination of these chemicals because they're made by different companies. Why is this bad? These chemicals have not been fully characterized to see if they are safe for human health in the environment. A study showed that over 4,000 chemicals were likely to be present in just plastic packaging. Just your Amazon bags can have over 4,000 different kinds of chemicals. Of those chemicals, 63 are known human health hazards. So we're talking about carcinogens, mutagens, things that can affect your brain development. 68 were known as environmental health hazards, things that can kill our wildlife and endanger our ecosystem. Manufacturers will describe plastic as inert, but we know that chemicals could potentially be released out of that plastic and into our environment. Studies have already shown some of these additives in the plastic to be released, maybe not all, but more research still needs to be done to really understand and quantify how much is present specifically for chemicals that are potentially harmful. A study took plastic commonly found on the beach, including your styrofoam cup to the grocery bag and even polypropylene string that's used in like fishing line and they put them in simulated stomach for birds and fish and found a huge release in estrogenic chemicals that affect the reproduction of those animals and ourselves. Fact number four, the majority of microplastics end up concentrating in our oceans. A study in 2017 reported over 4.9 billion tons of plastic waste are being left in our environment. That's over 60% of all plastic ever produced. And of that plastic, it's just gonna degrade down into microplastics. There are now over 5 trillion pieces of microplastics on the surface of the ocean. And that's over 250,000 tons in weight of microplastics. Those microplastics don't just stay where they degrade. They end up moving around our world. Studies in the Arctic and Antarctic have found ice cores with over thousands of microplastics in a single liter of ice. Fact number five, microplastics are in our food. So yeah, if we know that animals in the ocean are consuming microplastics, then we're likely to be consuming them as well. Whether we're eating wild caught salmon or even things that are farmed fish, there are microplastics present in our seafood. We could be eating up to a teaspoon of microplastics every single day. And that's not just from seafood. Things like our table salt have been found to contain microplastics. If we're eating it, we're also releasing it out of our body. There are new studies showing in human feces the presence of microplastics. Fact number six, microplastics are in dust. Let's talk about outdoor dust, roadside dust. The tires on a car are made of rubber and as they're continually worn down with overuse, they're releasing thousands of microplastic particles that end up accumulating on our roads and sidewalks. When rain events occur, those tiny particles end up accumulating in our environment and in our waterways. Not only do they just sit on the roadside, they can also end up in our atmosphere. Depending on how small they are, they can end up in our air and travel to other locations. This is how some of the dust that's found on glacial ice cores are actually traveling. They're not just traveling by water, they're also traveling by air. And if it's in the air, we're also potentially breathing it in. In comparison to outdoor dust, indoor dust is the majority of human inhalation of microplastics. Where are we getting our microplastic dust? That comes from things like our carpets to our furniture or even upholstery. These different items can release microplastics and accumulate on the surface of the ground where we can vacuum it up or be suspended in the air where we can breathe it in. There are 10 times more microplastics in our indoor air environment than the outdoor air environment. 
So don't breathe too deep. Microplastics can be inhaled into the lungs, depending on their size, and end up moving into the human tissue. This can cause a variety of immune responses and a release of those chemicals that are associated to the plastic into your own body, which is a double whammy. Fact number seven, microplastics are in our clothes. Stretchy pants, non-wrinkled clothing, athleisure wear, what do they all have in common? Plastic. Polyester, nylon, those are all forms of plastic and they are overtaking the textile industry over cotton. When you wash your polyester yoga pants in the washing machine, that is releasing thousands of microfibers into our waterways. And when it goes into the dryer, that lint that accumulates in your dryer is actually a big ball of microplastics. Most clothing these days are made of plastic and no one realizes what the implication of that is. The majority of plastic pollution in our environment is actually coming from our textiles, the things that we're wearing. Fact number eight, microplastics are being purposely applied to our skin. Yes, you heard me. Your microbead face wash or body scrub or even toothpaste contains tiny, purposely made primary microplastics. A single body scrub can release up to 100,000 microbeads into our wastewater. And don't forget about glitter. Now I, as much as anybody else, loves glitter, but those are all just tiny pieces of microplastics that we are applying to our skin that shimmer in our lip gloss or our highlighter is microplastics. And it's hard to think about putting something like that on your skin when there could be hundreds of different chemicals being released out of that piece of plastic. Fact number nine, microplastics are in our drinks. If microplastics are in our streams, our lakes, and our oceans, then they're also very likely to end up in the things that we're drinking. Our plastic water bottles, glass water bottles, and cans of sparkling water, even tap water, contain microplastics. A study found over 325 particles per liter of water bottle, and majority of that coming from unscrewing the cap and releasing all those particles. Tap water has about half the amount of microplastics and it's a better idea overall because you're not throwing that plastic water bottle away into the environment, which will later form more microplastics for you to consume again. If you think, oh, I'll just stop drinking water and I'll stick to beer or wine, well, you're wrong about that. Studies have found microplastics now in even beer, and the cork used in sealing that wine bottle is almost always made of plastic. Even your premium tea bags release microplastics. Premium tea bags placed in hot water can release over 11 billion microplastics in your single cup of tea. Can you imagine going from a teaspoon a day of microplastics to 11 billion more being added into your body? and all of those chemicals associated to it leaching out and into your body? Think about that. Okay, final fact. Fact number 10. Microplastics can become nanoplastics. What are nanoplastics? I never, I never heard of my nanoplastics. What are nanoplastics do? Oh my God. What are nanoplastics? Nanoplastics are typically characterized as plastics smaller than one micrometer, smaller than what you would see with the naked eye. And what do we know about them? Not much. We need better technology and more research in that topic to really understand the implications in our environment. Now we know because it's that small, it has the potential to move to different parts of our body that we could never imagine. That concludes 10 facts that you probably didn't know about microplastics. Now, if you knew all 10, you are an environmental warrior or a colleague of mine. I'm gonna finish it off by saying this. By 2050, an additional 33 billion more tons of plastic are likely to enter our environment if we do nothing at all. 
we need to make conscious decisions about everything that we use and buy to limit the use and accumulation of plastic and microplastics in our environment. That includes putting more pressure on companies to limit the amount of plastic packaging that we're using, or just plastic in general. We all have to make a shift in the decisions that we make every day. And that doesn't necessarily mean get rid of everything plastic, but just make conscious efforts to limit our use of plastic. Thank you for watching. And if you really enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more information. Michael Patrick.